So today we're going to revise the case study of Typhoon Haiyan. So Typhoon Haiyan was a tropical storm which hit the country of the Philippines. So we'll start drawing our tropical storm and because it was in the northern hemisphere the winds in a tropical storm in the northern hemisphere move in an anti-clockwise direction. And to try and give it a bit of place specific details, it was an extremely large storm, classed as a category five storm, which is why we put five around the eye, which is the central area of the storm, which is extremely calm. So for this case study, you need to know the effects and responses of the tropical storm. So we'll start with some initial primary effects. So when we are discussing case studies, we need to try and make sure that we're not producing the geography of anywhere. So if you covered up in your answer, Typhoon Haiyan or the Philippines, could someone read your answer and know that it was specific to the Philippines? So here is one primary effect. It's a crop that is grown in the Philippines. And I've represented this crop being angry because the coconut plantations have been flattened by the huge storm surge that was generated by Typhoon Haiyan. Now, not only were the farmers' crops destroyed by the typhoon's storm surge, but Tacloban City, which was hit directly by the tropical storm, suffered huge damage to its airport. So planes were damaged, the terminal was impacted, and the whole area was flooded. So not only was that a primary impact, but it then meant that aid coming in and help to the area was slowed down because they could not land the planes. A third and final primary impact we will use for this case study is unfortunately the number of people who died. So we'll just represent this person losing his life with a few crosses in his eyes. Now depending on where you read, you also read slightly different amounts. But it's approximately 6,000 people. So 6,300 is what we studied and wrote. And I've represented each one inside a raindrop because tropical storms produce huge amounts of rainfall. So these are our, what we call our primary effects. They happen straight away directly by the storm. Now as a consequence of some of these primary effects, or indirectly, we then have some secondary impacts. And after a number of tropical storm disasters or other types of natural disasters, some people feel that they're incredibly desperate, they don't have the materials that they need to survive, or some people take advantage of the situation and they go out stealing things from shops, which is called looting. So on ab abandoned buildings that people have left to try, usually when they're seeking shelter from the storm, in this case, and then those places are ransacked and looted. So that's represented by my uh, robber. Now, our second secondary impact or effect is one we have also studied in another LIC uh, example with earthquakes, is the spread of disease. And this is my little cholera germ, which is a waterborne disease, which spreads because the water has been contaminated by the severe storm surge. So you've got your primary effects and then your secondary. And lots of deaths can result as a result of the cholera from spreading in the water. And that's why it's really important that aid can get in quickly so that people can receive the materials they need to ensure they are healthy and help them to rebuild their lives. So what actions did they take? We can put these 
the methods of reducing the impacts into two categories. We've got pro immediate impacts, things that are done um, straight away, the sh not immediate, the short-term responses, but it is an immediate action. So things that we do straight away to try and reduce the impacts. So large mass graves were dug and could because so many people had died, large mass graves were dug so that the impacts of the spreading of disease could be limited. So this meant that many more people didn't die because they had buried the bodies very quickly so the water didn't become too contaminated. However, as we know, that there was some um, cholera which then meant this wasn't as effective as perhaps it could have been. The Philippines is on a series of islands and the only way to get to people was by ship or by plane. Now unfortunately, as we've seen, Taclaban Airport was flooded by the storm surge. The Philippines required support. They're a new country, a newly emerging economy, and they needed support. The United States have a Navy base and an air base in the Philippines, and they sent their ship, the George Washington, which from which they flew helicopters, to deliver short-term emergency aid to the people who'd been um, struck by the storm surge, um, the heavy rain and the flooding and the high winds. They provided medical care, temporary accommodation in, to in the form of tents, and they also provided parcels of food and clean water. And this helped to reduce any further casualties and loss of life. So these are what we call our short-term responses. Things that happen a little bit later on, which help to get people back into a, a way of normality, are called longer-term responses. Now, Oxfam is a charity that works in many different places, providing different types of aid. In the case of the Philippines, they supplied shipping boats, new fishing boats, so that people who had lost all their fishing equipment with the huge storm surge could then get back onto their feet and earn money and therefore provide for their families and rebuild their lives. So this was a very successful way of helping coastal communities who were impacted by the tropical storm. Lastly, another longer term response taken by the Philippine government was in terms of construction. They have built brand new storm shelters away from the coast, built on stilts so that when the storm surge comes in, as it did with Taclaban Airport, the water will go through the legs and the stilts, the people will be inside and they will be protected from the storm surge and the high winds and the heavy rain that the tropical storms bring. So in future storms this will mean that less people die and there will be a very effective response to the tropical storm. However this does cost quite a bit of money so they cannot build these shelters everywhere that need them. So that is a limitation of how effective this type of response is. And so these are long-term responses. So here you go. This is Typhoon Haiyan. Your example of a tropical storm, the effects and responses.